This is not even fair to the fish anymore. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. There it is. What's going on, everybody? Chris Jones here with the World's Worst Fishing. Uh, welcome back. And uh, today we we get to do something very special. Um, it's it's not every day that um, I get the honor to show you just a complete game changer. Uh, not only in the um, you know home garage bait maker sector, but for the end user, the angler as a whole. Um, Wacky rigging a stick bait will never ever be the same. All of your problems are now solved. Um, this is the Angling AI Wacky Wrap, and um, it is completely forward thinking by Josh at AI Molds. This solves a lot of problems that a lot of people have had with really soft stick baits over the years, and uh, I just cannot uh, praise enough the, the type of forward thinking uh that that created this mold this is incredible man i'm honored to even bring you this video strap in you're not going to want to miss it all right let's do a uh, quick little unboxing okay yeah the mold is small i like it i didn't realize how small it was and uh this is this this is so awesome guys i, I can't say it a, a, enough um this essentially creates a shell a ring that fits into the five inch angling AI core shot stick bait mold that uh, will allow you to basically make an enforcement ring out of firm durometer plastic for your wacky rig which what that allows you to do is have the body of the bait still made out of super soft plastic to get that wiggle that we all love from a stick bait but without the you know downside of not being able to wacky rig it without it casting off or having to put o-rings on um, you know there's just a lot of problems there and this completely gets around all of that this this is absolutely revolutionary and the bolt itself is really brilliant let's take a look isn't that something so you essentially have a rod okay all right let me, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is a lot like a tube rod. All right, so you can see the layout, right? You have these little sections of, of stick bait, <laughs> right? These little sections of it. And essentially what you're doing is you're injecting plastic and it goes around the rod, leaving you with a hollow shell that then fits back in. And so not only does this allow you to to um, basically adjust the durometer so that you have really f tough, firm, durable plastic for your hooking. But you can also, obviously, make it a different color. Okay, everybody, we are back. And um, what's really unique, again, about this mold is your ability to tailor the different durometers of plastic in the same bait. So the whole idea behind the Wacky Wrap is for you to be able to create that sleeve around the center portion of the bait and make it extremely durable, which will basically eliminate you accidentally slinging the bait right on off the hook. Um, you don't have to go to the hassle of O-rings, and even O-rings over time, if they're not sized exactly right, will eventually squeeze the worm um, to the point of actually making it break. Um, so you're not having to worry about that anymore. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use the Dead On Plastics Red Label Hard Blend, okay? This stuff is virtually indestructible. And if you have hardener at home for your plastisol, you can even add a little bit of extra hardener to this and make it even more indestructible. Um, it, it might even survive an atomic bomb. Let's pour a little bit of the red label in. All right, and again, we don't need much because this mold is not going to drink very much plastic, okay? Because it's just, again, just those little tiny shells. We basically just have a, a small paintbrush with some worm oil. So we're just gonna paint on some worm oil, all right? Just get this nice and lubricated. Again, it doesn't need to be drowning in worm oil. And we're back. So there is Red Label Hard Blend, all right? Super, super firm plastic. And again, we're just gonna load it up with small blue flake. I think this will be a really cool effect. The clear shell with the blue flake against the traditional black with blue flake. 
I don't know. Or it could look like total garbage. But uh, this is my first time using the uh, Wacky Wrap. So your guess is as good as mine. Or uh, no, I think it's the other way around. My guess is as good as yours. I am no more informed on what looks good <laughs> with this mold than the viewer is. All right, here we go. First Wacky Wraps. And uh, it's kind of like shooting a small tail mold. You don't need a whole lot of plastic. That's why we didn't measure out a lot. All right. Just going to hold a little bit of pressure. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. All right. We've at least got the ball rolling. We'll meet you right back. Okay, here we go. Let's take them out. And uh, see what happened here. Oh, in the laundry, right on time to ruin it. All right, let's take a close look just to kind of show you what the mold's going to do. Okay, yeah, this is, wow, look at this. Look at the path the plastic has to take. It kind of goes in over the first rod, then has to go here, here, then over that rod, then fill in. That That's amazing that that shoots as well as it does. I mean, talk about so many obstacles for the plastic to have to get past. Yeah, okay. And they all filled in great, so how you get these off, let's figure it out. Maybe just slide, okay, yeah, perfect. All right, just slides right off, and then I'm assuming we just go, dink, yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's incredible. Okay, so here's the part where we actually have to pay attention a little bit. If you look, it's not perfectly round, right? You can see this kind of little notch right there where the bait kind of goes from thick and then tapers in just slightly, okay? That is sort of the tip of this thing. And the way that it goes into your uh, mold is you want to line that up, right? That little notch perfectly with the end of the egg sac, okay? So so you're not putting them in the egg sac, all right, like that, and you're not putting them behind it. There's a little bitty, little bitty notch that you line up right there, right there at the edge of it, okay? Just like that. All right, and now for the first color. This is the Dead On Plastics Black Bucket Sinking Worm Blend. Super soft, but also has that heavy, dense feeling and sinks automatically, okay? So what this allows you to do, again, is have your firm durometer in the uh, shell, in the wrap, right? Without sacrificing durability where your hook point is going to be, but you can still get that super soft uh, flutter action that you want. Um, you can sort of have your cake and eat it too. Um, without needing to add too much sinking additive. Okay, so we're just gonna start with a little bit of black here. All right. And then we are actually going to add salt to these. And so again, we're just gonna get some salt. And this is fine flake salt, All right? And we're gonna add a pretty good amount, okay? This is not a lot of plastic, so that was actually a very healthy portion. Uh, you know, for anyone at home that wonders, hey, you know, like, what's a good appropriate amount of salt? In the one measuring cup size Pyrex, if you fill it all the way up to the one cup, add a quarter cup of salt to your one cup. Okay, here we go. So Josh and Gary at AI said that with the shells in, right, with the wacky wraps in the mold, you wanna shoot your plastic pretty hot and pretty fast. Sort of the opposite of what we did in our last video, um, where slow, steady, cold. So, you know, this is one of those rare times when uh, you actually do need to do things quickly. And it's all about just getting the plastic to fill through those shells. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, boom, fast, but we're also gonna hold a little bit of pressure, okay? Fast, but hold some pressure, make sure everything fills and fuses really nice. All right, that should do it. All right, y'all know what time it is. Drum roll, please. First ever wacky rap, uh, at least for me. Here we go. <laughs> that was a terrible drum roll. I've lost it, y'all. I've lost my chops. Oh, look at that. 
<laughs> Look at that. Is that not cool? <laughs> Here, let's get one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me that's not a cool way to do black with blue flake. And you can see how soft it is. Oh, yeah. Look at that. The reason why he put the uh, insert there as opposed to in the egg sack is so that it's actually in the middle of the bait, right? It's, it's meant to actually center in the bait where you would wacky rig it instead of the egg sack where you would traditionally hook it Texas rig. Um, so that's why, that's why it's actually placed a little bit behind the egg sack. There it is. Blackwood Blue Flake has never looked better in a stick worm. So some of you may have heard of a concept like this, splitting up two different durometers of plastisol in the same bait. Man's bait company used to have their hard nose. So basically they would have like a frog, I'll put a picture up on the screen, where the nose where you're gonna put in the screw lock or rig the hook was made out of like super duper firm, tough plastic. And then the belly, or well, not the belly, but the body of the frog and the legs were made out of a uh, you know more um, soft durometer to still get kick. A really really cool concept. I, I guess you know all of that's not made anymore. Um, but this is sort of like not the hard nose, but the hard center, right? The hard egg sac portion of the bait um, for that reason. All right, so now we're gonna try something uh, completely different. We're not gonna go black and blue dark colors. We're gonna go a little bit more natural color. Sort of like a Alabama craw, um, but wacky wrap style. So we're just gonna kind of blend together orange, yellow, and white to sort of try to get a uh, light kind of creamy orange. Okay, here we go. Second round of the wraps. Perfect. Okay, there it is. Here's our orange. All right. So we've seen, uh, excuse me there. We've seen the shells in just straight flake and now with some colors, okay? Now with an actual pigment base. Okay, got them all in, lined up, looking good. All right. Boom. The body is basically a green pumpkin with black and orange flake and um, um, with the uh, salt additive as well. So let's go ahead and do them. Give it a nice stir. You gotta make sure that your salt is stirred up, your flake is stirred up. That salt will sink to the bottom of your cup real quick and then you won't really get the salt that you want in the finished bait. Yeah, there it is. Pretty cool. So my orange needed to be probably a little bit more orange to be more Alabama craw orange. Um, but yeah, you know, that's sort of what I had in mind, but uh, I actually really like it. It kind of came out more a flesh color, just a simple green pumpkin um, sort of idea to contrast the ones that we did earlier. Yeah, so how about that? You know, and, and not only is it just a fun little color accent that we've really never seen before. Um, you know, to my knowledge, there's not another stick bait or really even worm mold um, that allows you to place color just right there in the center um, when we're speaking about injection. So not only does it make, you know, a really fun color accent for you to now experiment with, but the functionality of it is even better, you know, just the ability to beef up the portion where you're going to, um, you know, rig your wacky rig and be able to use these soft worms over and over and over and over again um, without having to add anything to the bait, you know, like O-rings, for example. So, um, you know, functional, but also a fun way to experiment with color pattern. Yeah, so uh, here's sort of what we have there. Kind of see the, the colors. Yeah, this is pink, white, orange, and brown. So uh, hopefully we'll at least get close. All right, let's go ahead and look at these. Sorry again for the laundry noise. I can't stand it. Yeah, nice little kind of fleshy orange. Um, yeah, it looks a lot like the ones we did before, which actually turned out pretty nice. So I'm hoping that this works out. You never know 
until you know. But I, what, what I will say is with this solid color, you can clearly see those notches better that I was talking about in terms of how to line them up on the egg sac. You can clearly see the difference right in the rib section and then the section that tapers in that fits into the back side of that egg sac. So that's a more clear indication of how those are designed. All right, so we just put our salt in, which uh, kind of bubbled it back up, but we have sort of a nice sort of kind of pinkish cherry red, and I um, actually want it a little bit more pink. You know, it kind of looks like cherry Coke. And so we've just kind of been blending uh, Scuppernog, um, a really fun color. I'll show you just real quick. Tim's Cola dye, right, to get that cherry Coke and uh, just adding some pink to taste. So yeah, that's sort of gonna be our uh, earthworm body color. Oh y'all, this is cool. Earthworm, baby. <laughs> there it is. Let's get one out. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, this is not even fair at this point. And uh, let's see if we got close to our target picture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a still photo of these and then um, sort of put them in a collage with our photo example just to see if we got close. Look at that. This is not even fair to the fish anymore. And just like that, we have the most realistic to the real thing earthworm pattern that you can probably get in a stick worm simply because we now have the ability to add the wacky wrap and do it to color, you know? That's, uh, that's pretty special stuff right there. So just as an experiment off camera, <clears throat> I ran some straight clear wraps, okay? And uh, you know, the reason for it is, okay, let's say, um, let's say you don't want every color to have that kind of split color or a different color right there where you're gonna hook it. Let's say you just want a good old fashioned solid worm without, without basically the two colors. Well, yeah, as you can see, the clear is almost invisible. So here's some June bug with the clear wacky wrap. And uh, it, what it does is it essentially makes like a half inch long section of core shot. You know, you've got the shell of clear and then the June bug going underneath it. See that, right? Yeah. You know, because I, I, I understand not everybody is gonna, is gonna want to do this, right? So, hey, you know, I really like this idea, but I don't really need, you know, the split colors. Well, there you go. Okay, so far we have seen some really exciting colors. Uh, we have demonstrated the actual wacky wrap mold itself. Um, it shoots flawlessly. I have not had one not fill in or maybe trap air or bubbles. Uh, so I think you're generally going to get every single cavity of the actual wrap mold itself. Um, then putting it into the molds, very easy. They make it very, very uh, kind of foolproof with that little notch system. You'll know if you didn't put it in right. And once it's in right, um, the molds feel really well. The kind of weld of the shell to the body very good very tight uh they're not peeling off um i don't i don't really envision any problems there and then we haven't even gotten to the actual functionality part of it uh, but before we get there before we take them fishing we're going to show you just a simple rig um, in case you don't know what a wacky rig is all right so we have our uh light sort of medium light spinning uh rig here and uh in at least around here in florida with lots of grass um, I like at least these sort of more weedless, right, little wacky rig hooks. Oops. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So, again, right, just through the center. And we know exactly where to go because of the color. All the way through. Just like that. All right. Yeah, it keeps getting wrapped around my uh, <laughs> little weed guard there. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. I don't know if y'all are seeing this, but there are bats swarming this tree. And I'm completely terrified of bats. 
They are filthy flying weasels. Early morning frog action. Not a bad one, yep. What do you mean it's not a good one? Gotta get the day started, y'all. Mm-hmm. Still learning my GoPro angles here. Yep. We're gonna pick up the wacky rig. Once the sun kind of comes up, but we're gonna enjoy some early morning top water action. Who would have thought? Yeah. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on, Bessie. Yeah. All right. That probably concludes the top water portion. Yeah, that was a good hit all the way back in the back of this cove, y'all. Heck yeah. Oh, what was that? Oh, I lost him. Okay, this is a big fish. This. It's a freaking dink. Are you? This is a dink? Okay, I thought it was a big one. All right. <laughs> All right. God. We're on the board. We're on the board with it. Oh, 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 and what color is that? This is the color that Avery didn't believe in. The one I'm throwing. Yeah. How many bites have you gotten? I've gotten one bite. But yeah, there it is. Sweet. Money. Let's get another one. Yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Talk about eating it. Yep. Awesome. We made it happen. All right, my first uh, wacky wrap bass going back. Here we go. Thanks for playing. Oh, looks like we have another contender. Yep. Is that on the same color? Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, y'all. We're starting to work on them a little bit. So that's a few now on that same worm, right? Yeah. Nice. Two minute penalty. Two that's minute penalty? penalty. Yeah, fish landing violation. Avery's on again. This is a good fish. Yeah, buddy. Worm's still intact, I like it. Hold him up. That's awesome, dude. Heck yeah. Thanks for helping me get fish like catches what, on video. Number five on that one? Something. All right. We decided to try the earthworm color because my curiosity has just gotten the best of me. I really want to get one on that color. Ho, ho, ho. Oh yeah, come, come to daddy. Mm -hmm. On the earthworm. That's what I wanted. I wanted one on that natural earthworm match. That's a dang fine fish too, man. Fish of the day so far. Yep, I could not be happier. These, uh, these worms are working out pretty good for me. But it's got a it's got a lot of open spots in it. Oh oh oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Look how far up the worm is. <laughs> I love it. Whoa. There we go, y'all. the one on the old earthworm all right time to get this in the water so as a little compare and contrast right you'll notice the bait's gone i was throwing ah 
this right here, just a regular soft, salty stick worm. This is um, this is from a different mold, but the same size. And yep, he just slung it right off. All right, Happy Jack with another one. Same worm he's had a while now. Look at that. Oh, and it hooked hooked himself. Uh huh. Dark. Yep. Worms working. Worms working well for you. Worms caught some fish there. Yes, it has. They wanted that. Yeah, that one right there wanted it. Same one, the orange, yep. pumpkin orange. Italian dressing. Italian dressing. I love it. Yeah, boy, he he engulfed that one. Look at there. Well, fish needs to eat. I'd say this is a nice concept. All right, now I think I've caught one on every color except for the June bug. I have not tried the June bug. Look at that. Worm is still perfectly intact. Ready for several more fish. Avery just threw one back. Thanks for that. Yep, this has been absolutely awesome, y'all. Okay, everybody, we are back in the fish cave. Uh, wow, what an experience. What, what an awesome uh, mold concept. What an awesome way to solve a big problem that a lot of anglers have had forever. Um, and what a morning of fishing to test it out. Absolutely incredible. We caught so many fish that I just, you know, didn't really have time to include in the footage. And some of them just didn't quite get the camera engaged. Um, still kind of learning that new GoPro. Um, but in, in any event, uh, what an incredible proof of concept. We probably caught, we probably caught 25 bass and only needed a handful of worms to do it. Uh, you know, years pass, and, and not even years past, but even just recently, throwing normal soft stick baits, it would have taken us 30 worms to, to catch those 25 bass, because a few of them, you're just gonna sling them right off, and then they're usually one and done when you do get a bite. Um, this was absolutely incredible. What an amazing concept, what an amazing mold. Uh, just from a bait maker standpoint, you with this mold at home, what I will say is now that I've had some experience with it, I've made some and taken them fishing and uh, seen them work and, and kind of seen their performance, I think the key is to shoot the body very hot, fast, and hold some pressure. I think the key to the best success is getting a really good weld uh, between, the, uh, between the wrap shell and the body. I think with just a little experience, uh, experience and a little bit of uh, experimentation, you'll find exactly how to shoot this, you know, your salt ratio, your durometer to get the best performance. And uh, this is going to completely change how you throw stick worms, wacky rigs. That was absolutely amazing. I hope y'all enjoyed that as much as I did. An awesome concept. Um, solves a lot of problems. This was every bit as good as I wanted it to be um, in terms of the mold and proof of concept. Incredible job to the guys at AI and um, I'm honored to be able to bring this video to you. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll see you in the next video.